Hey guys, I want to talk to you about my experience with Duolingo. I've been using it for over 100 days now, ever since I got back from Germany in October. I've been learning it to try and better communicate when I travel through Europe, and I want to let you know what I think. I'm not sure if this is similar to your experience. I took Spanish in high school for five, six years, and I can't remember pretty much any of it. But despite failing at uh, learning Spanish in high school, I've always wanted to learn another language. So now I have the opportunity to spend some time studying and I want to learn German. I looked online, I did a lot of research, finding out what different people were doing, uh, different methods for learning. I tried a note card style method um, where it repeats certain words to learn certain vocabulary and that has helped build up some of that memory. Um, However, it does not teach you grammar, it does not teach you pronunciation. I figured I needed something else. I saw on Evan Edinger's YouTube channel that he did Duolingo for, I think, over two years to learn German, and he was fluent enough anyway to communicate over there, so that kind of piqued my interest, and so I picked up Duolingo on my phone. So for me, it, I think it was like $79 for the year. That was totally worth it. After using it for a number of weeks, I found it was good, but I needed more. So I decided to look at different sources, different source material. And one of the strategies I was reading about was basically absorbing as much source material as possible and letting your brain process it, which is a lot like how we learn languages um, when we're babies. We don't take grammar classes, we don't go to school. What we do is we absorb what our parents and uh, relatives are saying, what our family is saying, uh, you know, make uh, a link between the word and the item, the object, and that's sort of how we learn. So it's different when you're older, for sure, but I figured some of these same methods will probably still apply. So I've been watching German movies with, um, in German with German subtitles, not English subtitles. The whole point is to try and learn the context from the movie. I've also been reading German books, mostly, you know, very low level introduction books. And that's actually helped grammar quite a bit. And it, it actually reminded me of, I think it was like the third grade when I first started to be able to read on my own. And it was just so exciting to be like, wow, there's this whole other world out there and I can do it on my own. It was really exciting. So it was funny. I got to experience that all over again. Um, it is challenging. There's a lot of grammar or excuse me, a lot of vocabulary I do not understand, but that is, you know, that's sort of how you build that up. So, so far Duolingo, I'm going to show you what this looks like. These are all the levels starting with basic. These are all on level five. And one of the strategies, uh, again, Evan Edinger suggested was to have one five, one four, one three, one two, and then one one, and kind of cycle between these. Because if you try and do one of the lessons over and over again, it gets very repetitive because um, they're trying to teach you, you know, five to eight new vocab words. And, you know, it gets a little boring and then you might forget it later. So, I kind of like to do, I'll level up on one, go to the next, and then go back and repeat. So I have to relearn that information or recall it if I, if I do recall it. So that's been going good. The other thing, the other part of this are stories. The stories are pretty cool. Again, they're, um, stories allow you to kind of have another kind of exposure. And, you know, you, you get the same flow that you get in English in terms of, like, you can kind of figure out what's going on in the sentence, even if you don't understand all the words. You can repeat them as much as you want. Um, and I'm trying to keep up roughly even with the stories and with the lessons. And they kind of give you two different perspectives on that. Let's see. Something else I want to mention, they have leagues. So I am in the Ruby League, which is kind of like middle of the road. Um, it, it, it does help keep you motivated if you get busy during your week or you forget. 
it'll say, you know, you're about to lose your ranking in this league and you don't want to get, you know, you know, no one wants to repeat the, you know, second grade or whatever. So you have to, you have to keep up your studies to, to do that. So it's just sort of a fun gamification of that. The store. Okay. So you can buy things when you complete lessons, you get these rubies, kudalings. What are the, I don't know what they're called. Diamonds, something. So when you progress in the lessons, you will get these uh, points that you can kind of spend in their store. I've already bought everything interesting. Um, there's unfortunately not, not a lot of stuff to buy. You can buy some. You can buy some outfits for your little guy for duo. Uh, I like the add-on packs. The idioms and proverbs was not that great because it was two lessons and they were both identical. So there was. That was a little lacking. It was kind of annoying. The flirting one was kind of interesting too, because um, it kind of gives you different different context for some of this stuff. I will say, like some of the a couple of the drawbacks of Duolingo, a couple of the scenarios with the wording is very odd. It will, I mean, maybe they're trying to be funny, which it is kind of funny, but it's like the cow gives the woman a dress. It's like okay, that's not really a sentence you would ever say. So if you're trying to figure it out context-wise, it doesn't really make sense, um, which is kind of annoying. It's kind of funny, but I would rather have more context, like from books where the sentence structure are kind of sayings that you understand or ideas you understand, and that, that helps you learn. So after 101 days, I can say that my knowledge of German is much more than it was 100 days ago. Um, it has helped be a baseline and helped encourage me to expand out um, other sources like books, movies, TV shows. Duolingo top tips. Set up your phone to have dual keyboards for both your native language, which for me is English, and the language you're trying to learn. This does a few things. This helps use some of the special characters that may not be in your base language, but are in the language you need to learn. It also helps do predictive text and autocorrect on the words you're trying to type, which helps you learn. So I don't understand how to spell all these words. I know how they sound. I have seen them a few times and it helps sort of correct. So, you know, a lot of the I before E in English is now E before I type thing in German. So that's really been helpful. Second part. When you set up that second language, you can use speech to text. Nine times out of 10, I'm always using speech to text when I can for Duolingo. The reason is I want to improve my pronunciation and speaking. I'm not necessarily looking to be fluent in German writing, but I would love to be more fluent in German speaking and conversation with people. Reading actually isn't that big a deal. Um, I can kind of understand that, but it's going to be the speaking and the confidence sounding those words and pronunciation. So I highly recommend using the speech to text. And when it screws up, guess what? You get to do it again until you can learn how to say those words um, better than you, you can on your own. It's not as good as having a conversation with a native speaker for sure, but for 79 bucks and something you can do all hundred percent on your own, it is a great option in my opinion. Another thing you can do on Duolingo is find your friends and see how you're doing in ranking in comparison to them. I have found a few friends. None of them seem to be active right now in Duolingo, so I'm sort of on my own. That's okay. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's a wrap. That's kind of what my thoughts on Duolingo after using it for 100 days. I am definitely going to continue using this. I want to try and use it for at least a year, if not two years, to expand my German vocabulary, pronunciation, um, and I will definitely be adding in other sources such as books, movies, TV shows, uh, maybe even some German audiobooks as well. That's going to be more of a challenge because when they're speaking quickly, I can't really picture the words. So that's why when I do movies and TV shows, I always leave the subtitles on in German so I can see the words that they're actually talking. One caveat to this has nothing to do with Duolingo. However, when you are watching a movie or TV show, in another language, if it's native in that language, and they have English subtitles, be aware those subtitles may not match up to 
what's actually being said, which can be honestly uh, counterproductive to what you're trying to do. Same goes for some German subtitles do not match up with the German they're speaking. That I found to be extremely frustrating on some shows, especially if the show is originally in another language like English, and then it has German dubbed audio, and then it has German subtitles. The German dubbed and the German subtitles oftentimes do not match up. So that's just something to be aware of. Try and find shows that were native in that language you're trying to learn with native subtitles in that language. That, for me, so far has been the best way to learn some of the pronunciation of words and also to uh, figure out the context based on the scene and what's going on. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've used Duolingo, um, make a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you have any strategies that have been helpful for you, I'd love to hear about them. And I'll see you next time. Check.